Hello viewers, 4DIYers here with another tutorial video for everyone. In this particular video here, I'll be doing a demonstration of how to make a portable auxiliary light for your vehicle. As always, if you're not a subscriber, then be sure to hit that subscribe button. If you have enjoyed this video, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. For this, I'm using two floodlights from Odro. These are a 4 inch, 27 watt LED light from their Brave Man T1 series. Link to these lights will be included in the description below. These particular portable auxiliary lights can be mounted anywhere on your vehicle, trailer, recreational vehicle, and possibly boat. However, these use a magnetic base, so they can only be stuck to steel. They use a 12 volt power supply from your vehicle, receiving power from the cigarette lighter socket, but you can always install battery post clamps instead, depending on your preference. First starting with the wiring, depending what you are using, one or two lights will affect how the wiring is made. For the most part, I'm also trying to repurpose some components I had laying around. One is what's left from generic wiring for an auxiliary light, and the other is a cigarette lighter plug which I have saved from something. For these lights, I am using weatherproof connectors so they can be used in the rain with no issues. Cut the wires to length, if need be, and strip the casing. Install the seal for the weatherproof connectors. These weatherproof connectors can be purchased off eBay. I have used the same ones for my light bar installation video as well. They look cleaner than a spade connector, and the connectors are protected from the elements outside. But they do need a special crimper to install the terminals. Install the terminals and pinch them in place by hand. Then using the terminal crimpers for the connection. Once done, install the connector casing and retaining clip. Next will be to cut the wires for the wide harness. We have two lights, these will need to go into one. For the wiring, a gauge chart will be needed. This will depend on what type of light draw you do have and distance the wiring will be ran. The wiring I am using is oversized, but this will allow me to use the harness on other lights as well when I finish. One side of this pair will have the weatherproof connector and the other side will be soldered. Now the second pair of wires will be slightly longer these will be intercepted by the shorter pair of wires. The longer pair get a connector on both sides. One side will be connected to the light and the other side will be connected to the main power supply wire. This wide harness can be removed and one light can be used instead. So I have two options if I wish. These two separate lights will allow me to illuminate an area from two directions or in opposite directions. Considering this is a much heavier gauge wire, instead of using my soldering iron, which will take much longer to heat up the wire, I am using a handheld soldering torch. After the solder joints have cooled down, install an adhesive filled shrink tube to help protect the connection from the elements. You should have something like this one done. Both wires connected into one common wire, this wide harness can also be removed to attach one single light instead. Next, soldering on the cigarette lighter plug. Simply unscrew the tip to expose the contacts inside. I removed the old wires and will be adding new wiring so everything matches. I want to keep this wiring looking clean, so I have decided to use a rubber casing. You can also use heat shrink if you wish, such as shown in my light bar installation guide. The ground wire goes to the outside spring clip, and the power is the main center probe. I also added some liquid tape to help protect the exposed conductor for the power wire as added safety. We do not need a fuse in this harness as it's already fused from the cigarette lighter output in the vehicle. Be sure to check out the rating for your vehicle's circuit in the owner's manual so you don't overload the circuit. For the main power wire, the length will depend on where you want the lights to be mounted. If it needs to go to the rear of the vehicle or trailer, ensure it's long enough. But remember, it must be the correct gauge of wire Otherwise, you may experience a voltage drop or the wiring will overheat, becoming a fire hazard. For this, I'll probably have an 8 foot length of wire. For the lights, this includes the power from the cigarette lighter plug, the relay, and to the light. So according to my wiring gauge chart, the wiring can handle up to 20 amps. Again, the wiring will be cased in a heat shrink, and whatever will be exposed inside the cabin has a rubber casing. I have fed a lighter gauge single wire in the casing, then taped the pair and pulled them through. Add a connector to the one side, and the other side will need to be soldered. The wiring kit did have some wires cut off, so I will need to add those back in. I have the relay with the pigtails from the connector, and the only wires I do not need to run are from the switch. 
This switch can be mounted anywhere. You will need to pick up something that is in a case or the contacts are hidden so they cannot short out. Unlike my light bar wiring guide, this will remain a switch power supply and the switch also has illuminated LEDs. Solder in the supply wires to the relay. For me, this part will remain inside the vehicle so there isn't a need to use adhesive filled shrink tube to protect it from the excessive moisture. Your setup might be different. As for the relay, ensure the relay you are using is able to handle the amperage of the lights as well. Relays do come in various amperage ratings too. So just to show you where I'm at with the wiring diagram, we have all the main components such as the lights, normally open relay, switch, and cigarette lighter plug. First we made the wide wiring harness for the lights. Next was the power wire from a cigarette lighter plug to the relay. Then the main power wire from the relay to the wide harness. And finally the switching wire, which we don't need to add as it's already part of the repurposed harness. This switch has an LED as well, so instead of two wires it has three. As mentioned before, there's a power coming into the switch, a power going out to the coil in the relay, and a ground wire for the LED. In between my wiring I prepared these magnets so the coating would have time to dry. These magnetic bases were originally intended for a hook mount and are rated for about 10 pounds each. Give them a wipe down with a wax and grease remover. This will ensure the coating will stick with no peeling issues. Apply a tape if you wish. Another wipe down with wax and grease remover. Now onto the coating. For this I'm using plastic dip. You could apply a vinyl coating, felt pad, rubber pad, or some form of protection to prevent the vehicle's paint from being scratched when these are mounted. I would recommend at least three coats to provide that cushion, so when the magnet is attached to the paint, it won't damage it. You will also need to be careful when installing the magnets onto the metal. If it does snap into place, you may risk denting the surface. While the plastic dip is wet, remove the tape too, then allow it to dry. Just a sneak peek once everything is hooked up. The harness is plugged into the 12 volt output in the truck. We have plenty of wire to move the lights anywhere, then the switch to try them out. Now it's time for the assembly. Remove the brackets on the lights to install the fasteners. As you can see these particular brackets also have a horizontal adjustment which is handy for work lights. Install the center fastener. Odro does supply hardware but I found the center bolt to be too long so I used a couple I had laying around instead. You can also apply some thread locker if you wish to these bolts. Ensure the head of the fastener will not interfere with the surface it's mounted to. Reinstall the lights in the brackets. I may switch these socket head bolts out for hex heads as I can't really get my allen key in there to tighten them. For the most part I won't be using this setup on a moving vehicle so they won't experience any vibrations. Once the light and mounts are together this is what we have. Even with the lining on the tailgate the magnets do mildly stick to the metal in behind. Now for a quick demo. They mount perfectly on top of the box. We can face each light in opposite directions and even alter the horizontal angle of the beam. The switch wire is long enough. I can leave it outside of the vehicle. The lights can even pick up a power source from a trunk area in a vehicle and then the switch wire is long enough to reach the driver. And now at night. It's quite dark at the moment. Just to give you a peek inside the cab. You can see it's connected to the 12 volt source. The relay is only a short distance away. Wiring is bundled up on the seat. Outside the camera shows it a little darker than it actually is. Flipping on the lights we have an extremely well lit area. Perfect for working on your vehicle, camping, farming, going out on the trails or loading a vehicle. New videos are uploaded every week to my channel. Show your support by hitting that subscribe button below my video. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up and if you have any comments please feel free to post them below. Thank you for watching.